guys. Welcome to Rain's Place. I thought tonight I'm making dinner. I would put the camera on and do a cook with me. So on the menu for tonight is fried chicken strips, homemade mashed potatoes, and Italian green beans. So I peeled potatoes, cut them up. They're on the stove. I'm waiting for them to come to a boil and then I'll set the timer. And now I'm going to make the coating for my fried chicken. Oh, that's the wrong one. That was my first. I just need some all-purpose flour, and I have about a pound of chicken that I'm doing, just over, I think, just around a pound. So I'm going to do, let's see, that's a full cup. I think that that, well, I'll put a little bit more in there. I'm going to say like about a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. You can put whatever seasonings you want in yours, but this is what we like. I have some salt, some black pepper. onion powder paprika and you can see I'm very generous with my seasonings we're going to do a little oops a little poultry seasoning not too much you don't want it to overpower the other spices and then literally just a pinch of thyme or two pinches okay and then this um this little tip i got from my sister and it really does make it a little crunchy just a little bit of breadcrumbs these are italian i would normally do plain but they're downstairs and i'm upstairs so italian it is and just a little bit and that's it that's going to be our breading i have my green beans here and now let's move over to the other okay just to show you i have about two two and a half pounds of yellow potatoes that i peeled washed quartered some of them are in six pieces rather than four and um placed in cold water you always want to start your mashed potatoes from cold water so that the outside of the potato does not cook before the inside so you start from cold water um, I like to bring it up to a boil and then I time it for about 12 to 15 minutes and that's usually pretty good. So it's almost to a boil now. I'll have to keep an eye on that. And then I have a pan of oil here, just a couple inches. Um, I actually used this once before, so I'm going to use it a couple more times before I get rid of it. I have that on. It's getting warm. And let's move over to... Okay, so... Um, before I get on to doing the the breading, I want to start with um, some stuff for the potatoes. So I'm going to add a block of cream cheese to a microwave sa safe bowl. This is just a plastic bowl that I microwave stuff in. block of cream cheese, a stick of butter. No, these are not diet by any stretch of the imagination. I don't really like mashed potatoes. I will eat some of these, but this will be enough for Chuck to have a couple of nights. And I've never frozen mashed potatoes before, but I heard you can do it with good results. So if anybody's done that before, let me know. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little, Woo! did you see that? All over the place. A little half and half. I'm going to throw this in the microwave and do 30 seconds at a time. That was a brand new half and half. Get that cleaned up real quick. Okay, so that's going in the microwave. Okay, as for my wet, I've done a video on this before, but it's been a while and it was with other chicken things, so I don't know if everybody saw it. Just going to put two eggs and some half and half. That's probably plenty. 
присылает. Okay, and then we have um, we have our dry. Just break up your eggs a little. And I should have used the dry fork to mix that stuff up, but I'll do it with my hands in a second. sponge out that one's torn up I put it in the dishwasher at night so although it looks a mess it's very clean it's probably why it doesn't last long because I put it in the dishwasher but we'll see okay so that's good for that I don't know if you can see can you see down the, yeah I have a plate here I have two plates here one of them I'm going to put um, paper towels on on there, a pair of pinchers, and I'm going to lay that over by where I'm going to fry the chicken. Again, just mix this up. You just want to get all the spices mixed in. And I like to do like the double dip, so um, I like to do flour, wet flour, and then they go in the fryer. Okay, I think that's good enough. Again, I have about a pound of chicken tenderloins. I remove that big tendon that's in them because that grosses me out. Um, when I buy them, I try to do them all at one time before I put them in the freezer. Um, sometimes they, I get too many. So I just put them away with, but this, this package I did already take the tendon out, which is great because on nights tonight, like tonight, it makes uh, just doing it quicker. And you're just going to do them all like this. So it's dry, wet, dry. When I was young, my mom used to make fried chicken but she always did like chicken on the bone. And honestly, I like never make it like that. Mostly because we all like chicken breast and also because it just takes longer to fry the bone in chicken. So this is what I do. And then it's nice because usually like this is over a pound, so we'll have leftovers and then it's good because you can make like a wrap with one of these slight, you know, one of these pieces of chicken and, um, you know, got lots of uses this way. Okay, my potatoes are boiling. I'm just going to set my timer. I'm just going to check this oil over here. And that oil's ready, so we can, as soon as I get enough to throw them in, we'll do that. We're having a little bit of a thunderstorm right now, so my husband had to bring the dogs inside to keep them quiet so I could video. Okay, I'm going to just swing around here. You come with me. Okay, you'll see my setup here. I'm just going to drop these in. If you're scared of the oil, by all means, use your tongs. And I don't know if you can see that back burner. The potatoes are going nicely. If 
while that's going. Let's get some more of these going. See how loud that is? I, don't, I won't make you watch me do all this chicken, so I'll bring you back when it's time to get the other chicken out of the... Okay. So this oil was hot, so these went pretty quick. But I like to just fry them until they're a nice golden brown. Get some other ones in there real quick. Hope I have a good... Yeah. You know what? I'll leave the rest of those to put in the next batch so they're not overly crowded. Got a couple more um, minutes on those potatoes. And I don't like to leave my chicken or anything fried on the paper so it doesn't get soft. I'm just going to move that into a pie plate there. And keep trucking along. We have 30 more seconds on my cream cheese mixture. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we have the last batch of chicken coming out now. And again, this is a pound. If you have a family, you can really make it stretch with a little bit of chicken, small pieces, and good size. So I'm just going to put that on there. Give it a quick once over. I'll clean this properly after. So that's me. Okay, so chicken's done. And I just strained the potatoes. And what I like to do here is pour, mm, this might be a lot for the amount of potatoes, but you know what? Chuck won't complain. So that's the butter, the cream cheese, and half and half. You need a good bunch of salt. Don't be scared to season your potatoes. That is the difference between good potatoes and not good potatoes. And again, we don't eat these potatoes every day, actually hardly ever, because I can't be bothered, to be honest. We're more likely to eat a roasted potato, french fries, something like that. And like I said, potatoes are not my favorite. I mean, mashed potatoes are not my favorite. But Chuck loves them, so I'll make a big batch like this. I'll show you how much I eat out of this, and then he'll have it a couple nights in a row. And then make sure you just taste your seasoning as you go. Pretty good. I need a little more black pepper, a wee more salt. I'm going to have Chuck finish doing these for me, and I'm going to show you how we make our green beans. So he's just going to mash them. And again, you could use a hand mixer, but I like just smashing them around. Okay. So on my hot burner over here, I'm putting a nonstick skillet. I got the, um, I got that stuck in my pocket. Hold on a second. My mom was the absolute best cook, and this is her recipe for Italian green beans. And I just realized there's a tiny piece of chicken floating in that oil. Okay. 
Okay, so this is her recipe. And this is just olive oil. And you just want to like almost coat the bottom of your pan with olive oil. If I turn it on, it'll get hotter faster. You're going to go for a medium high. On my electric stove, that's like a seven. And you want that oil to just come up. Let's see what Chuck's doing over here. Are you tasting potatoes? Yes. Quality control? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's why he doesn't complain about helping. Okay. So when the oil gets hot, not there yet. Okay, like I was saying, this is a pound of chicken. That's a lot. You could definitely feed a family with that, for sure. Especially if you have good size. And... So this might be dinner for two nights. And like I said, I like to also like, like you take one of these and you put it in a flour tortilla with some lettuce, some honey mustard, a little cheddar cheese, and you've got a nice wrap. What I usually do is any leftovers we have, like we'll eat them tonight for dinner, then I might have a sandwich or something tomorrow, and then I'll take whatever's left over, put it in a freezer bag and freeze it. And when my son comes home, I give him leftovers to warm up in his air fryer or in his oven. Let me just get, while we're waiting on that. Did you put a little hot water and start making it? Oh, and I need a spatula. Do I have a clean spatula? Yes, I do. I think that's pretty good. Let's try one bean and see. Okay, so this is just a can of beans that I strained the water out of. It's almost there. And now I've tried doing this with like fresh green beans. It's not the same. You have to use the canned. Okay, so I have one can of beans and obviously if you have a large family, do two or three cans of beans. And you just mix them like this. I see a couple of these little ends on here, which I'm just pulling off. It doesn't matter. But, you know, if you see them, grab them. Okay. And then I have my mother's um, recipe for the fresh Italian breadcrumbs. And I have a whole video on how to make that, which I will link below. But what I do is I save all of my ends of bread, or sometimes if I get bread on sale... I will just get a couple loaves and I will make all of the crumbs at one time. Okay. Put as much crumbs in as your heart desires. That was one can and I'd say that would be like two good sized handfuls of crumbs. And then I'm going to, um, yes please Frieza. Those same crumbs, let me just tell you, those same crumbs are the crumbs I use in my artichokes. Again, my mother's recipe. Those are also the crumbs that I use in stuffed mushrooms. Also my mother's recipe. And we make an Italian chicken with those crumbs. Also my mother's recipe. I just do mine set differently. Like she used to do, again, bone-on chicken. And that takes a good, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. So I just use boneless, skinless chicken breast. And it's done in like 25 minutes. So... Um, I don't know if I have a video on that. I don't think so, but maybe I will this week. Actually, not this week. I'm chickened out, to be honest with you. Okay, so these are sticking a little. Let's see. I might have to add a little bit of olive oil. You don't want to put too much in, but you also don't want it to stick. So I'm going to let this go a minute and see what happens as they cook up. These are delicious. And in the crumbs, just so you know, in the crumbs is... The reason it's sticking a little bit because there's some Romano cheese, salt, pepper, parsley, garlic powder, and a little bit of olive oil in that as well. What did I do with my olive oil? Oh my goodness. If it had teeth, it would have bit me. I'm just drizzling a little bit. And again, just so it doesn't um, stick. Okay, so they're starting to get a little golden. Chuck, would you throw this for me, please? 
I don't know if you can see it on camera, but they're starting to get a little golden here. You want them to be nice and golden, like browned, before they're done. This is the hardest part for me because I'm so impatient that if I just let them sit, they would brown a lot faster. But I like to touch them 15 times. Okay, now you can kind of say, I don't know if you can or not. See how nice and golden that is? That's how you want it. Spatula, but my other stuff is in a dishwasher. This will have to work because I'm hungry and I don't feel like washing nothing. Let me just go back to the potatoes for a second in case some people don't know how to make mashed potatoes well. Um, again, cut your potatoes, try to get them all about the same size, and then put them in a pot with cold water. Bring the pot to a boil. Once it starts boiling, then set your timer. It's usually 12 to 15 minutes, depending on what type of potatoes you use. A softer potato, like gold or white, is probably closer to the 12 minutes. And then something like a russet might be a little bit longer. But um, after they're done, just drain them good. Get as much of that excess water out as you can. And then go ahead and season them and add your butter or your milk, whatever you're putting into it. In our case, it's cream cheese, butter, half and half, or heavy cream. I had half and half. And then salt and pepper. And don't be afraid to season them. It's also good if everybody in your family likes it to put some garlic powder in there. That's delicious. And these are almost done. You can see like the little crunchy bits here. Maybe I'll get a little spoon and show you closer. I don't want to fuck up my camera. See that golden color? That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. And if you have the crumbs already made, this turns a, you know, a simple everyday can of green beans into something a little bit more special and a lot more tasty. And again, I have a lot of cheese in these crumbs, so that's why it's sticking even on the non-stick a little bit. And these are great leftover as well. I'm almost there. They're almost done. I'm going to start getting our plates ready so I can show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, I'm almost out of battery, so I'm going to wrap it up. Here's our dinner. Delicious. Um, that is some homemade mashed potatoes, Italian green beans, and some fried chicken fingers. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please give these recipes a try. When you do, think of my mom. And um, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.